So we're talking about what about Bob mm -hmm. and how funny it is <laughs> and also what's wrong with it. <laughs> so. Let's start with what's right with it. Okay. Um, I like that. Uh, it sh shows somebody um, who the character of Bob is just a charming guy and he's significantly mentally ill and does some pretty bizarre things but it's not depicted in the scary light uh, when we talk about the real fears behind the stigma on mental illness which is the fear that you're losing touch with reality or don't have control over your own actions. Mm -hmm. Bob is, is miserable but he's actually and asking for help. And asking for help. Mm -hmm. And he's he's in touch with reality and he's mostly in control of his his behavior. He's not out of control in any way that would be dangerous or scary. Um, and and that's kind of how he you know takes in um, the, the the family. He's he's just charming. Yeah. <laughs> and and I think that's a real depiction of what most mental illness looks like, not the, you know, person foaming at the mouth in a, in a straitjacket kind of yeah. image that would, would be say. So I think, to me, that's one of the things that makes this movie, even though it has some flaws, overwhelmingly positive. Okay, so mostly good, not, yeah, not yeah. bad. The dangerous thing, mm -hmm. like you, you asked, what's wrong with it? Well, it shows a therapist behaving badly. Uh -huh. And what's, what's bad about that is um, he's, uh, if people think that that is typical, what, what therapists think is, is normal and right, mm -hmm. and, and they may not recognize all the different mistakes that the therapist is making, they might realize that, you know, giving your child um, therapy uh, without her permission in public, you know, that's not, not good, but uh, for instance, the first mistake he made, I think most people missed. But what's the, <laughs> what is the first mistake he made? <laughs> um, but so before he patronizes Bob with the, um, the whole baby steps thing, mm -hmm. um, I think that might be the first people mistake people make, might notice that I wouldn't like to be treated like that. Yeah. But the first mistake that he made earlier was in diagnosing Bob. He should have found out that Bob was just completely isolated and realized that that's a problem he needs to solve right away uh, and not try to solve Bob's complaints about you know, getting in elevators. All and, these diseases he had. Yeah, I'll, you know, not try to address that. Try to address, well, you know, you're not going to be healthy until you have some kind of support network. We need to get you in group therapy, find you a support group, um, something that can take the place of a family until we can, we can get you out and meeting people and because that's the real problem. Anybody in Bob's situation is going to be mentally ill because he's too isolated to be health healthy. Yeah. It, everyone would be sad like that. Yeah. Well, and as we all have experienced when we just uh, keep to ourselves and life gets more boring and uninteresting and <laughs> sad and in general. So yeah. So then you just go downhill. Yeah, and and what Bob has is I would he's not that mentally ill in terms of I guess the disease that he has. And I agree with how the um, show, in general, it might have taken a little longer, but you know, this is a movie. <laughs> yeah. But his recovery is, it could have been really that easy because the underlying problem was his isolation. And that's what we call an adjustment disorder. I, that's what I would have... Um, uh, you would have said it was an adjustment disorder. Yeah. Okay. His, his, all of his problems would have just would likely have just evaporated just like we saw do on the movie. It wasn't the death therapy. It was the fact that he uh, was able sure to... I'm sure it was the death therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was the fact that he was able to hijack a family. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what allowed him to, to get better. And that's really the only thing that was wrong with him was he, 
he was in an unhealthy environment and all, all that needed to really happen was to, to get into a healthy environment. Yeah. Well, it seems like he kind of um, attaches his need from isolation to this therapist to, you know, yeah. like he attaches himself so much to. Yeah, and this is, and this is also the, one of the few things that um, Leo Marvin um, does, the character of Dr. Leo Marvin does right, right off the beginning is he's obviously not fooled by um, Bob's antics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he's not really very amused, but he still works with Bob. He still puts considerable effort into him during the session, showing that he does care about Bob. And that's what, that's what a, that's the good thing that he does from, from there on out. Uh, and that's why it's believable that Bob, you know, goes back for more, even though um, the therapist patronizes him. He's he's also uh, it not only shows enough caring to he's listening and helping. Yeah, to try to help Bob, but he's also um, hopeful. You know, he's, he tells Bob, "You can do this," mm -hmm. uh, and and those two things are, are what. I think drives Bob's motivation to, um, you know, I'm not going home and being alone. I'm gonna. Esther, <laughs> <laughs> term <Dr. Marvin. laughs> You can't go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I need you too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and and this is something. Um, uh, a lot of Leo uh, Marvin's, Dr. Leo Marvin's, mistakes are. Are things therapists want to do? We, I think, it's really tempting to give people a prescription to take a vacation from their problems when people refuse to 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 do so. Mm -hmm. um, but they're uh, so focused on it, they don't let go of it. Yeah, and um, it, it makes it a bigger problem, maybe. Yes, it is, and I, I know from being in this situation myself that. It, it, would you have significant personal problems, whether they be mental illness or, you know, or just your average drama, um, the, they're very serious. Um, and they need to be taken serious and attack serious. But um, one mistake, I, I know I made the same mistake um, myself, was not thinking it's so serious that I have to be on it at all times. Mm -hmm. um, you need to take breaks from your your mental illness um, problems. You need to rejuvenate, so you can attack the the situation. I I don't know if you were studying for school. You know, sometimes. What I studied. Yeah, when you study for school. Oh yeah. yeah you, you you probably got to the situation where you were you were so tired that your studying probably wasn't that effective. It would have been better if you would have gone to sleep and woken up and. And try to study then. Yeah. <laughs> and I did that myself. Mm -hmm. um, I developed ulcers over some of my worries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I had two little personal models I've I've come up with, uh, based on what I learned from that experience. <laughs> was life is very serious, but it rarely helps to take it that way. And um, uh, life was very serious and then I got ulcers and it's been a riot ever since. <laughs> <laughs> the party with the ulcers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I learned my lesson from, from getting ulcers that, um, you know, that I need to take breaks from my problems. So would, would that no be matter just how serious distracting they are. yourself or? Yeah, distracting yourself. Finding um, a hobby? Yeah, putting yourself into a, to a hobby. Um, creating a space in every day where you're not going to worry about anything. That goes right into one of the things the movie does right, which is show that Bob has some, has some useful knowledge to bring to his, the table in terms of his own treatment. And that's something therapists recognize today. Um, sometimes I, I get a little bit... You can help yourself in... A lot of them... A lot of the knowledge for how to treat somebody comes from the patient themselves. Mm -hmm. we, we have 
degree is either a master's degree or a PhD or a medical degree, depending on which professional you go to. A lot of um, a lot of knowledge goes into that, but what that does is it gives us ideas on things to try and see if they work. Where the, the patient themselves, we recognize, brings a lot to the table in terms of what's worked for them in the past. We need honor and respect that, what they need. And so Bob recognizes in this video right away, um, yeah, I need to take a vacation. And a vacation from my problems would be a vacation from my loneliness. A vacation in the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I get your vacation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a wonderful yeah. Yeah. Take yours. And once again, that's exactly what um, what what I say what what Bob needed. Oh, that's really all he need, needed. Um, <clears throat> be, and and I think the video is a really good example of showing because people talk a lot about, complain a lot about the family members milking their mental illness, faking it. And Bob here in the first scene where he fakes his own death, that's straight up malingering. That's, he's acting more mentally ill than he is for attention. But Bob needs attention. He's completely alone. Mm -hmm. um, so we can see this, this in a very sympathetic character and it's it's nice that Bob's not our family member and, and his mental illness isn't burdening us. Mm -hmm. So we can see this clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're in this situation, it it's, it's harder. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's when it's impacting you and, and putting a burden on you, somebody, yeah. somebody straight up acting more mentally ill than they are for attention. Um, you it, would have less patience with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's harder. It's, it's easier to just go... Yeah, well, you just need to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, nothing so, wrong with you. Get over it. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And but there is, and I don't want it, you know, but there is something really wrong with Bob. Bob is in a situation that would make anybody mentally ill. If anybody, if you just people don't handle that lo those levels of isolation well at all, it mm -hmm. causes depression and anxiety, and it's even psychosis. Mm -hmm. um, straight up so um, and that's something we don't recognize we recognize e eating too much makes us obese we recognize smoking will give us uh, sure heart problems and, you know we don't realize that um, the link between isolation and psychosis I mentioned uh, another video or another movie that I think we both love Castaway Tom Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Sorry, I was reading about Tom Cruise <laughs> last night. That's a totally That's different thing. Cool. We're talking about a mentally ill character here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks's character, um, you know, he ends up, he, he's depressed, he tries to kill himself in the movie, and you know, he ends up with a love-hate relationship with his volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, That's That's very much what those levels of isolation will, will do to somebody. The incidence of death from suicide are enormous. For, just from isolation? Yeah, just from isolation. Okay. And then you have the losing touch with reality in terms of um, not clearly distinguishing a volleyball from a person. <laughs> 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 but you can see how that really helped him cope. cope. Yeah. It was actually a healthy thing for him to do. It helped him yeah. that that, that loss of touch with reality actually helped him with the real threat to his survival, which was the depression. What does Leo Marvin do wrong? Uh -huh. Well, I already talked a little bit about what the first thing he does wrong is misdiagnose um, uh, Bob. Okay. Uh, he doesn't take him his, his mental illness as serious as, as Bob, as Bob is portraying, but he doesn't um, correctly identify the core problem. No one's going to get better without less isolation. <clears throat> um, so that's that's the first thing it does wrong. The second thing, of course, I think people recognize is um, the patronizing, the, the baby steps. Mm -hmm. And this is something that therapists do all the time, and that is not necessarily wrong. We want to, we want to break the problem down into manageable chunks so that somebody who is... Into uh, baby steps. What made 
that patronizing for 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 Bob was his first mistake, not seeing what the problem really was. Um, whatever your insurmountable problem is, we want to break it down. Okay. So that, that's to me. That's is that, is that clear at all? <laughs> <laughs> <That's mud. laughs> <laughs> no. So, so you're saying that because he misdiagnosed him in the first place. Yeah. Then he patronizes him. Yes. So. Yeah, because he's he's catering to a problem that's not the core problem. I see. Um, and that's what makes that patronizing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's one of the things. If you feel, if you go to a therapist and you feel patronized, mm -hmm. maybe that's the problem. Maybe the maybe um, the therapist uh, needs to understand what your core problem is better. Mm -hmm. And there is some give and take on that because um, it's hard to open up to somebody, and so uh, you're you're often you know a lot of movies show that the presenting problem isn't the real problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I don't I don't see that it, you know, certainly not every client does that. Some some clients that you know must have the opposite problem where they disclose too much and you worry about that they're gonna have trouble coming back because they might feel they embarrass themselves the first time. Mm, I see. Um, so but it's something to work with your therapist if it's something to say, hey I, you know, I kind of feel patronized here. Um, and I think that's okay to say to to your therapist. I I remember um, the first time I prescribed a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it go was, over well? Uh, it went it went over okay. Um, yeah. It went over okay, but I apologized to to him the next session. Yeah. <laughs> I just like that is such a rookie move. So, but I yeah. can really identify with 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 uh, Leo Marvin's. Um, uh, desire to do that mm -hmm. to uh, to a patient, and but I think the fact that I apologize also really opened up a dialogue between myself and that client on on you know how am I doing? Do you feel patronized? Yeah, that's an important aspect of of getting that healing relationship in in the in the therapy room. That's that's. That is the most effective yeah. aspect of, of therapy. I think that comes down to just general, honest communication, mm -hmm. which maybe is hard to do with everyone in real life because because you're you've got so much at stake in relationships. But with your therapist, you could. Yeah. Because. Yeah, and that's that's another problem with uh, Richard Dreyfus does what clients often do to therapists, which is he puts himself on the pedestal, whether it's the therapist arrogantly putting himself on a, a pedestal or the client, and there can't be too great of an inequality between, between, between the individuals because you can't relate to somebody who's that much yeah. higher above you. And, and that's, a, that's a difficult balance to, to, to strike. I know when I started, um, Considering being a therapist, my first reaction was like, I cannot sign up to, to just to go out, go to have people come into my office and go out there and, and say, I am the solution to all of your problems. <laughs> uh, that just felt just so arrogant to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the archetype of um, Dr. Leo Marvin really expresses that fear. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways is one of the negative things about the movie but once mm -hmm. again something we can talk about and and it, it it brings it brings that problem out so that people can discuss it I think so like I said I'm overall positive with the movie <laughs> yeah mostly, mostly a good thing <laughs> yeah mostly a good thing I can't um, what <laughs> does make it mostly a good movie uh, well the fact that um, Bob gets better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think part of the stigma on mental illness is people think you don't get better. You, mm -hmm. you, you go away to some insane asylum and that's the end of it. <laughs> Once you're crazy, you're always crazy? Is yeah. that the stigma? Yeah, that's that part of it. That people think that? 
uh, and there's always a risk. Um, uh, that you only what that the, 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 the that you can't you you can't trust yourself and your attachment to reality ever again, and other people can't trust that as well. You mean the risk? You thinking that about yourself, or yeah. or both, or other people thinking that about you? Yeah, so both. Both. I mean, that's one of the reasons why people who um, end up in the hospital after a suicide attempt, you know, maybe they're hauled away by ambulance, and they're more worried about things like who's who's going to know that they're going to to um, the psych ward than whether or not they're going to get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I've yeah. personally experienced that. I know that happens. That yeah. um, that's often, you know, you know, somebody's taking a lethal dose of a chemical to try to kill themselves. And what are they concerned about? Oh, I'm going to psych ward. Who, who's going to? Please He's don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> are are you are you crazy? <laughs> you're 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 about you know your 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 life is on the line here. Yeah. But no, it's there. It's who's going to find it's out. It's kind of like you're holding on to whatever shred of reputation you think you have. Yeah. Yeah. That's Instead of trying to just... Trying like, to save your life. And, and, and <laughs> get over whatever you need. Whatever. Yeah. Like, get it. Yeah, get better. And uh, I think it's, it's a dual problem because I think people um, do have negative ideas about mental illness. But... Um, particularly the mentally ill are their fear of that is actually out of proportion to what what it really is there's there's always going to be uh, uh, hopefully through our efforts with the am I crazy videos and other such campaigns less than less but there's always going to be those people who react negatively to it but there's plenty of people who um, out there who don't partially because a quarter of all people have a significant mental illness so that's a huge proportion of, of, of people already that are going to understand. Yeah. So lots more people are going through it than we think. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, everybody in the world has their own problems. I mean, it might not be mental illness problems, but that in some way everybody can relate. Well, yeah, and that, that goes back to um, one of the misconceptions basic misconception people have about mental illness. They think that um, you can understand a mental illness in terms of symptoms, but most mental illness symptoms are a matter of degree. It's like your the temperature. Everybody has a temperature, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, to most people who don't have temperatures. <laughs> uh, if you don't have a temperature, you're dead. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's what temperature it is, whether you're suffering from uh, high, uh, high temperature because of a fever or maybe you're, you're dying of hypothermia. Mm -hmm. And that's what most mental illness symptoms are. So depression is misery. Everybody is miserable sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's normal. Uh, it's kind of like a headache. You, you're not necessarily physic physically seriously ill if you have a headache. And because most people have headaches, they can understand what my, they can begin to understand what misery and migraine can be, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of misery and depression. So a migraine and a headache. Yeah. But so what about Bob is is mostly positive, but how can we turn the negatives into positive things? The the main thing is to keep in our minds a, a better picture of what therapy is really like because that's the only real danger to me with what about Bob it we don't have very many windows into what a therapy off, therapy's office therapy session is like particularly pe to people who've never been if their only exposure is what about Bob that's pretty negative <laughs> um, because yeah, I want to see it there it's a okay. it's a story and it's a story about what went wrong <laughs> okay. and it, the therapists I've been to um, have shown a lot of humility and respect for my view or the view or in my case the, the view I have of the, the clients mm -hmm. and it's it's easy to make mistakes in therapy um, 
and you, you can't expect your therapist to be perfect, mm -hmm. but that's what typically happens is, is you work with the therapist and overcome those, those difficulties. Um, it's, a, it's a relationship.